Пожалуйста. Meine Damen und Herren, wir sind bei der sechsten Session beim Destination Day 3 angekommen und es ist auch schon eine Tradition, dass wir ein Donauforum haben und äh, diese sechste Session beschäftigt sich heute im Rahmen des Donauforums mit dem Leben der Zukunft an der Donau. Die Frage ist, haben wir es hier mit Nachbardestinationen zu tun, die mehr oder weniger konkurrieren? Sind sie Partner oder äh, sind sie Konkurrenten? Dazu haben wir ein Panel, das hier besetzt ist und Frau Gordana äh, Plamenac wird äh, dieses Panel leiten und ich darf Ihnen das Wort geben. I have many different names. I have many life forms and many faces. Many colors and many senses. I am fertile and abundant. I am the keeper of time. I am the source of life. I am the Danube. Uh, well, Good afternoon, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for saving time to come Friday afternoon to this panel. I would also like to, to uh, thank my speakers today, my panelists, because um, um, it is always hard to uh, manage tough agenda at, uh, I, as, at the tourism trade show like ITB. So um, uh, let me first um, uh, introduce them. Uh, from the right-hand side, we, ha we have Raisa Ben-Shufi, uh, Managing Director of RG Deutsche Donau, uh, agency uh, encompassing um, uh, some 60 destinations, predominantly in um, Baden-Württemberg and uh, Bavaria but uh, covering German Danube. Risa, am I right? Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, next to me is um, uh, Nick Greenfield, uh, tour uh, operators relations in uh, European uh, Tour Operators Association. Uh, and um, uh, this association brings together some 800 members and um, uh, these members are always interesting for uh, um, the tourism market because they are those who finally wrap up the offer and sell it to potential clients and tourists. Um, this uh, association brings together not only tour and online operators, but also tourism boards, hotels, other suppliers, and um, um, they are indeed uh, very prominent in Europe and beyond. On my left hand side, I have two dear ladies. One is Daniela Wagner, um, a regional director uh, for Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa in Pata, um, a leading association of the kind in Pacific and Asia. Pata stands for uh, Pacific Asian. Travel Association, uh, established in 1951. Um, it, it, it really proves to be a long-standing um, industry leader in uh, tourism in uh, this region and beyond also. It brings together hundreds of members, among which we do have some 27 international airlines, hotels, airports um, and what was really impressive for me it was that you have 63 educational institutions yeah. and that's great i think this is the key but we Thank will you. talk about that later you, you should come and work for pata <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> but anyway thank you very much and um uh we have um um another 
a, a lady who represents um, um, Raisa represents Upper Danube, and Ruina represents Middle Danube. Uh, she comes from Croatia, and uh, uh, Ruina Bušić Srpak, she is the managing director of the tourism board of Vukovar Srijem County. Uh, it would be very interesting to have um, uh, these prominent speakers today. And I'm so pleased and thank you very much that you accepted this invitation because I think that different angles will really give a special picture of everything of what we are um, trying to do. When I say we, I have to say that I'm speaking here in the name of um, the Danube uh, Competency Center. I'm the chair of, of the board. I'm, uh, my name is Gordana Plamenac, and I will um, uh, really try to lead you through this event today. But before we start the first round of questions, I would only uh, like to use a few more moments to tell you about the Danube. Uh, this uh, video that we just saw uh, proves that there is a partnership on the Danube. This is possible because it was produced and done in cooperation of Serbian National Tourism Board, uh, Austrian Development Agency and the Danube Competency Center. And uh, the latest news are that this film um, won the second prize at ITB for country. Uh, 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 presentation, so I think this deserves a round of applause. Sorry. Uh, 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 secondly, I uh, also would like to say that uh, this film covers only 588 kilometers of the Danube in Serbia. Entire Danube is 2,888 kilometers. Uh, striking natural landscape. Uh, diversified at the highest possible level, from idyllic north to uh, the dramatic wilderness of the south and the Danube Delta. Uh, excellent opportunities for activity holidays. Cycling route number six, European corridor number six, Eurovelo six. So, um, uh, national parks, camping and so on. Uh, then, uh, 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 rich cultural heritage that derives from layered history, starting from Neolithic time until contemporary industrial uh, uh, heritage. Uh, 100 million people living on the banks of the Danube. Uh, four, four country capitals on the Danube. Uh, number of festivals gastronomy and wine, um, um, traditional handicrafts, uh, different languages, uh, 10 countries right on the banks, and four more countries liaised to Danube through tributaries. So uh, is this a possibility for joint work and partnership, or are we all competing there? Uh, what goes in favor of, uh, of this topic is also the fact that the biggest growth in 2015 over 2014 had uh, um, two countries on the Danube, uh, meaning in Europe, and one which is linked to the Danube. So this was, I don't know, maybe Daniela heard that at uh, the Global Forum in Istanbul mm -hmm. when uh, Mr. Jose Manuel Barroso said about the new destinations, saying uh, that the biggest growth are registered for Iceland, mm -hmm. Romania, yes. Montenegro, you remember that, Montenegro, and Serbia. Mm -hmm. So here is the chance. But do we work in favor of ourselves or are we competing? Um, uh, secondly, uh, that's why Danube Competency Center, who is actually the organizer uh, and developer of the idea of the Danube Forum, decided to put this topic today and they um, and, uh, 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 proved to be uh, really uh, uh, the real association bringing together 
uh, members, 80 members from all sectors, from uh, public, private, and civil sector. Danube Competency Center was established some six years ago, and uh, Danube Competency Center uh, positioned itself as the leading association of this kind um, uh, uh, at, at the Danube. So enough for me at, the, at this point. Now I will, I will without further ado, uh, uh, start the first round of questions, and I will start from Raisa. Uh, Raisa Um is well known on the Danube, but what do you think? Is there any chance that we can really work together? Is there any chance that we can create the products uh, which will be um, uh, the result of joint work of different countries and which will be um, uh, available as the offer at the international market? Yes, generally speaking, um I would say working together all the Danube countries would be very beneficial purely for the reason that we already have something in common, the river, um, but also tradition, culture, um, and like when you, when you look at the history, we all have history together. So I think, um, in, in my opinion, in, in for a tourism product, uh, I think we should work exactly with those topics, with, this, with, the, with that kind of history and with that kind of culture and, and arts as well. I mean, uh, when, you, when you look at tourism marketing, um, when you think about theme marketing, um, I think that would be exactly the solution to, to work together. Theme marketing, um, such as we already have products, such as the bike, bicycle trail um, around, around the Danube, um, the history of the, the Roman history, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and also the culture. I mean, um, I, mean I, like, I like the sentence, uh, unity and diversity. So I don't think we, we have to shy away um, we, and, and see each other as competitors. Yes, we all have our own products. We all obviously want, want in, in, from a tourism perspective, want to have um, all the tourists coming to our country. Um, I understand that, but when you, I think when you look at the bigger picture, when you really want to you know, get a brand together and want to become strong in the European market as the Danube region, then it's not enough if you just do your own thing and if you just work uh, alone as a country. I think then you have to think uh, the bigger picture and uh, have to kind of like see what the market wants because visitors um, don't see borders. They, they just see interesting attractions, interesting cities, uh, landscapes, and um, for that reason, we should work together and put behind the competitor side of, side of things, because I think we all can proudly say uh, we have, in, in each destination, in each country, we have enough attractions on its own, um, and we are very diverse, um, and, and, and every destination offers something different. Um, so I don't really understand that we're not already saying, okay, we, we are proud what we have, um, and, and we can show that, and we, we, we're different, um, and we can kind of like bring that together. Um, do you know any of these products that already exist at the Danube, which could be uh, first-hand offered, for instance, to other European uh, and potentially European clients? Um, yes, I think the, the bicycle trail mm -hmm. or the, the Roman, the history part of things, um, there are already products that, um, that can be sold together. And um, I think in, in that perspective... And nautical tourism, for instance. Yeah, nautical mm -hmm. tourism. Um, is, is the thing um, because the German Danube is actually not accessible by boat for most of the, the parts. So we have 600... Okay, you, are, you have Schwarzwald and, uh, and, um, uh, yeah. and, and the nature, so... Exactly. So it's a bit like when you, when you think about a river, um, river tourism perspective. Mm. I know it's a big topic for all the other mm. Danube countries, um, but when... And that's, the other important part, when we want to work together, all the countries, we have to find a common ground um, and, a, and a tourism product that everybody can offer. Um, and in, in that instance, um, when, you, when you think about the river tourism, um, then it's not really a product um, in Germany. And then we couldn't be, uh, 
really included. So you mean nautical? River tourism could be a product because it could be canoeing and camping. Yeah, and that. Yeah. So on and. Oh yeah. Yeah, that definitely. I mean, like. Uh, water sport um, mm -hmm. tourism that's that's already a really big big part of the tourism product in, in Germany festivals festivals astronomy, all sorts. so I think that's what I said earlier about the the culture perspective mm -hmm. I think we have already um, great festivals in place um, that, that kind of bring us closer together such as the International Danube festival in in Ulm that's happening every two mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something culture, mm. art, and the tradition we, we should all be proud of and mm. all can show together, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that is something we should, uh, we should focus on. Thank I you very much. Nick, Hello. do your members, sir, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> do your members know about the Danube? Do Ooh. they, do they, uh, <clears throat> do they organize trips to the Danube region? Uh, uh, how popular is the Danube among your members? What can we do that uh, we uh, 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 make it more present uh, among your members? So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I must apologize if I sound a little bit like Scooby-Doo, but at this point, on the Friday at ITB, my voice is just on the edge. But so you, uh, are, you are like Yves Montan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, actually, one thing I wanted to start with, just to make everybody think about this, um, pulling away from European clients, because our clients come from around the world, um, an Indian colleague of mine many years ago said to me, he said, you know, India is one continent in one country. He said, Europe's problem is it can't really decide if it can be one continent in many countries. So if you want an idea of cross-border cooperation and how you see something like the Danube, go and ask someone from India, from the United States, from China, from the long-haul markets, Australia and New Zealand, who when they come to Europe, certainly the first time, are not doing a single country or even a single city. They will visit a number of countries. In the case of China, latest research says between four and five countries. The Danube offers what a great way to visit a number of countries because it is this natural route through the countries. And I totally agree with what Raisa said about people not recognizing the borders, they recognize the product. Um, one other thing I would also point out in terms of the Danube is the, the biggest increase in a sector, and I'm sure Daniela would agree with mm -hmm. this, that we've seen is in river cruising. River cruising is big news at the moment, and it continues to grow. And obviously, Europe has above all two major rivers, three if you count the Volga, obviously, but they are the Rhine and the Danube. But arguably, the Danube offers the greatest amount of variety along it. So those are just some initial thoughts. In terms of how the Danube is popular among our members, it's definitely well known in Europe, but it should be because as Europeans, you know, it's part of our culture. Um, outside of Europe, I think it's well known in the United States, in perhaps more mature markets, but it is being discovered. And um, I, we have members, for example, who are exploiting new markets, exploiting might be the wrong word, are, are tapping into new markets elsewhere in the world. And I know one of our members told me recently, he said, I'm selling outbound tours from Burma from Myanmar, a country that's been completely cut off. And do you know one of the first places they're asking about? Southeast Europe and the Danube. Why, potentially? Because they also have a great river mm -hmm. flowing through their country. Mm -hmm. And they look at that river and they say, where can we find something like this in Europe to get a European perspective on a river? So as far as we're concerned, absolutely, cross-border cooperation is very, very important, but definitely, the Danube, and particularly, I have to say, the, the middle and lower Danube, uh, there's only scope for growth there. It's not as well known as it could be. Um, I agree with you. I cannot agree more than, uh, with what you just said. But the point is that, uh, uh, speaking of the Danube, upper Danube uh, infrastructure um, is much more developed and the lower Danube infrastructure is to be developed. Mm -hmm. But uh, the authenticity and the wilderness of the lower Danube could be attractive. 
But on the other hand, thank God that we have uh, river cruises because people can get acquainted and get a taste of the Danube mm -hmm. from the river cruises. And speaking of that, I will turn to Daniela. I saw in her uh, uh, CV that she's also the co-founder of E-Waterways with some 1,200 small boats. <coughs> yes, I can. Yes? Are there any of these boats on the Danube? Yes, all of, well, well, not all of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Many of them are on the Danube. Um, well, that's a completely different part of my life, obviously. Yes, I know, but, uh, but this is true. Well, actually, we founded that company in 2008, my business partner and I, because we saw that as cruising developed really quickly as one of the sort of fastest growing double digit uh, mm -hmm. sectors in travel and tourism, mm -hmm. that um, there are many people who don't want to go on holiday with 4,000 of their closest friends, and that actually niche uh, cruising, small ship cruising, was going to develop really quickly. And that was really right at the beginning of when lots of the operators were starting to develop um, river cruising all around the world, uh, in Europe, in Asia, in Latin America. And, um, you know, there are many huge advantages to small ship cruising, accessibility of destinations, uh, the ability to go to, to places that large ships can't reach, um, uh, the very specific product focus on the destination, and this very close link between the experience of cruising and actually participating in the life of the destination, because you don't just land for a couple of hours, especially on river cruising, mm. you're actually there for several hours overnight, and it allows to you to really go out and explore the places that you're seeing. Um, but actually, if I can just change. Oh, no, no, this the, is what sorry, I sorry, wanted okay, to yeah, say. Yeah. This is what I wanted to say. Um, uh, 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 this, is, uh, this is really good to know. So uh, it also goes in line with smart specialization of the European Commission, what yeah. we can also use. Yeah. But PATA. Yeah. is probably the role model for many. Uh, the Danube Competency Center cannot compare with PATA, but maybe we can gain some of your experiences and, and knowledge through, um, through everything that PATA has achieved in all these years. Where is this um, uh, um, tackling point, you know, where we can really um, do something for Pata, or maybe Pata can do something for us. And what actually, can you just elaborate on this, uh, on this topic a little bit? Sure, okay, well, thank you. And again, congratulations for your really in-depth knowledge about Pata. It was very, very <laughs> interesting what you said in the introduction. I mean, Pata really started as an outbound organization where the European countries were helping to develop tourism product in Asia. Um, as um, uh, Mrs. Flamlack says, it's 65 years old this year. It has almost 1,000 members. And the really interesting thing about PATA is it's all about public sector members and private sector members. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, it's very different from many of the other global tourism organizations, which are either public sector, like UNWTO, or private sector, like the World Travel and Tourism Council, mm -hmm. or actually also ATOA. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it sits across public and private sector and large organizations such as Amadeus and very small travel, travel agencies mm -hmm. and maybe just one or two employees and has a huge focus on education because of the need mm -hmm. for human capital development in Asia. It's actually a very, very interesting organization. But there, there is in Asia actually one very similar structure to the Danube um, Competence Center, which is actually um, the Mekong. So the Mekong um, brings together a number of different, it's an upper and lower Mekong. It's the largest river in Asia. It's the river where the most tourism development has been done. And um, basically, uh, the, the Mekong Cooperation Center started actually in the 1950s, really as a geopolitical um, collaboration and strategy between mm. a number of countries, predominantly large countries and small countries. So you've got um, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, 
uh, Thailand and also Myanmar, and then one part of China. Um, and over the years, that then became, really in the last 15 years, there was the idea of having a joint marketing um, approach between those countries, which was very beneficial in the early days for the smaller countries, you know, which are now very well known on the tourism map, but which is only, have only really, like Laos and Cambodia, have only become really popular tourism destinations in their own right in the last 10 or 15 years. Um, and uh, like Nick was saying, many people who are coming as long haul clients to that part of Asia are looking to cover more than one country um, in one trip. Um, but I would say actually, although the Mekong Marketing Cooperation from a tourism perspective has been there for some time, it hasn't actually been particularly successful as a marketing body. Um, and what's really changed that has actually been the product development. So it's been the river cruise operators starting to develop and market very brilliant itineraries. Uh, for them, it was the perfect, the river cruise development along the Mekong was the perfect, actually, tourism product development because it meant you could go from one country to another. Transportation is still very difficult within that region. And the biggest, of course, challenge has been visas. The lack of an ASEAN visa has been really difficult and continues to be a difficult issue. So clients had to get visas for all the different countries. This, these problems of uh, transportation, access, and visas are largely overcome on a river cruise product like that. So that's been really um, very, a very successful initiative. And there's lots of product there now from five star to one star. Um, and it's been but it's been driven really by the companies who also, a lot of these operators, of course, like Uniworld and a lot of the other tourism providers have actually seen river cruising as being the way to grow their businesses and they have product on the Danube and they have product on the Mekong and other rivers around the world. But that, that's really been uh, very successful. And where I think, you know, Parta can help is, I think it would be really interesting to see if one couldn't you know, the two completely different parts of the world, but the objectives of, in terms of shared history, culture, gastronomy, experiential travel, which is, you know, really what's changing the way that tourism is developing, those are common to both the Danube and the Mekong. And, uh, you know, clearly the kinds mm. of, exactly the kinds of clients who would be interested in doing, experiencing the Danube are the kind of clients that should be experiencing the Mekong and um, we obviously the Pata region is the fastest growing outbound region mm -hmm. of travelers worldwide and that's why everybody is turning their eyes now to Asia as an inbound destination to their own destination so we you know we'd be delighted to find ways of also maybe positioning the Danube more actively within PARTA workshops and in front of PARTA audiences. And then looking also at maybe exchanging best practice of you know, what's, what's going well on the Danube you could use for the Mekong and vice versa. So I think those are some of the issues that we would be interested in discussing. <clears throat> Thank you very much Sorry, uh, for this, uh, for this um, uh, first round. And now Rujana, uh, uh, Serbia and Croatia are neighbors. You are also squeezed in between Hungary and Serbia, and we are somehow all congested there on the Danube. Um, do you think that there is much more space for cross-border uh, cooperation or projects that will, um, uh, from which uh, some new products uh, or new offers w could evolve? Uh, Yes, we uh, cooperated already uh, on this cross-border program, uh, programs from the EU to develop uh, our uh, touristic products uh, and make them uh, visible on the touristic market. Uh, but I wanted to say at first, uh, in content of this theme of this uh, whole panel, it's about competitiveness. Uh, uh, I want to say I come from a country with the thousands of islands and with the thousands of line of beautiful coast. So uh, the competitiveness is very relative thing because a lot of our tourists are primarily domestic tourists and we have only 150 kilometers from uh, Danube 
in Croatia and only in one side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have only right side 150 kilometers. In uh, th that uh, condition, uh, when we uh, want to develop a touristic product, we have uh, logical uh, uh, actions to our neighbors to, to develop together uh, our touristic products. Uh, I also want to say that uh, this area in Croatia is not a primary touristic re region, and in the last 15 years uh, we uh, make a lot of projects that we want, uh, which are uh, developed touristic products and we want to create uh, the product for the market. Uh, this is one uh, kind of work and the other kind of work is to promote this product. Uh, in that uh, direction of uh, uh, activities, uh, uh, I want to mention one project uh, uh, what was uh, realized between city of Vukovar and city of Bačke Petrovac uh, in Serbia. The, the project was named Forming the Center for the Advancement of Knowledge in Rural Tourism and uh, we created two, uh, uh, two points of uh, knowledge in uh, how uh, uh, these handicrafts and all these things uh, what we can offer to our tourists primarily from the river cruise uh, uh, ships. So uh, that's the, the great uh, uh, example how to develop through this cooperation uh, touristic products. The other thing is how to promote uh, this touristic product. Uh, Raisa said one uh, beautiful thing that uh, visitors don't, don't recognize the borders. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really correct. Uh, so uh, the Danube is the chance to, to create uh, Europe uh, in one, uh, uh, one touristic product. So the Danube is the main point. And uh, I don't uh, see uh, competitors in my neighbors uh, which are, uh, are they in Serbia or are they in uh, Hungary? Mm -hmm. Because uh, in Croatian Danube area we have Baranja and you have Baranja in Hungary also. Mm -hmm. We have Srijem, that's the geographic names of uh, parts of uh, uh, Croatia, and you have Srijem also in Serbia. Mm -hmm. How can we say you come to Baranja <laughs> but not in Hungary, just come to Croatia? Mm -hmm. I think that's not a good uh, way to, to get uh, the uh, to tourists in Croatia or uh, any other country. So. Uh, I see my neighbors, Hungary, uh, Serbia, or Bosnia uh, on Sava, that's the, the other European uh, river, uh, as my partners, uh, and uh, we can together uh, create a great touristic product and uh, the great emotion to our visitors, because they're coming uh, here, because they want to, uh, to see something uh, which they find in their hearts. So I think uh, when, you, when they choose some uh, uh, destination, they're going from uh, personal preferences. And you, when someone comes from personal preferences, you can take, uh, to, you, to, you can take a border in that preferences. So maybe it's complicated <laughs> to explain, no. but that's the way uh, uh, I see uh, the things. I hope in the further time uh, we will find some other programs EU or DCC or uh, uh, any other program to, to create the other uh, uh, programs to, to produce, uh, to, to create a touristic product and to make uh, this area, this Croatian Danube area with our neighbors in Serbia and in Hungary more visible in all this, neighbor, uh, all this Danube. Because um, how can Budapest be our competitors? <laughs> Uh, Osijek is a beautiful city, but Budapest is also <laughs> it's a beautiful city. We have three capitals on Danube. So four. Four, uh, sorry. Vienna, Bratislava, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Budapest, and Belgrade. But sorry. I wish other people would think in the same manner like you do. And um, um, uh, I uh, really agree with you that uh, Danube is the symbol of Europe. But speaking of um, uh, Europe, uh, there is an important document which was adop adopted five years ago, your, uh, the Danube Strategy by European Commission. And uh, I would like to, um, to do the second round with uh, your opinion, yours, and um, raise us about the Danube Strategy. What do you think? Is this a good platform for uh, de joint development, uh, tourism development, or there are some things missing. What is missing? Can you just uh, do it very quickly so that we have some time for, for very the audience? Quickly. I don't think that anything missing. We have only to work. 
Aha, uh -huh. okay, <laughs> this will be the one of the conclusions. Raisa, what do you think? I think um, we, we've, we've taken some steps and I think that's really great at the Danube strategy, uh, the EU strategy. Um, but I think what's missing is more conversation with each other, um, whether it's on a, on a workshop atmosphere, um, I think it's even important to talk together with tour operators um, and really um, kind of find uh, what, what's going on, where are the similarities. And I think the Danube strategy um, has taken the first steps, uh, such as with Trans Danube and, and great projects that all kind of like relate back to tourism. But I think um, it just showed that there's a lot more to do. Do you think the Danube strategy can help individual destinations to think more at the regional level? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, when, when you think about the project Trans Danube, um, mm -hmm. which was about sustainable um, ways of transportation, mobility, mm -hmm. um, and it helps back, um, back together with the regional level to, to implement sustainable ways um, mm -hmm. of transportation, but then it, it, it relates also to tourism because locals and tourists they use the same trans modes of transportation. Um, and I think most of the, even if a strategy, other projects as well, if um, other projects seem like they don't really relate to tourism, um, at the end of the day, if you do something for, for locals um, and for your, your, the people who live in your country, then at the same time, you, you do as well a lot for tourists. And, and that's what I think um, it's great at the, the, the strategy. Nick. Now, the international associations aspect. How can we increase the visibility of the Danube and raise the awareness among your members? Uh, <clears throat> talk to them, meet them. I mean, it's a very obvious thing. I think, um, uh, and I'm sure Daniel has mentioned this as well, that uh, when we run workshops, uh, when we run events, but particularly our, our speed dating workshops, mm -hmm. The idea, and I know the Danube has attended actually, uh, for all four of the lower Danube countries, the idea is, is to, to see what the operators are looking for. Um, I, would, I would give a word of warning here. <clears throat> There's a danger in some destinations that people sometimes try and not guess exactly, but offer something which maybe isn't quite right for the markets that you're working with. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you need to do is to go out and talk to different markets and find out what they are looking for. And the great news for all along the Danube is that the really big trend in recent years is experiential travel. Yeah. Even the largest operators, the people who put 45, 50 people on a coach or on a boat and take them around Europe, sort of, you know, Tuesday it must be Belgium, they, they changed their tune in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. they, they realize that even people traveling in groups and obviously individuals are looking for experiences. They're not looking simply to sightsee or to shop. You enjoy doing that as well, but they're looking for experiences. And my personal experience in the Danube is there are so many interesting hidden things there. But also what you said about the lower Danube in particular, the fact that it is somewhat undeveloped could be a hindrance, but at the same point could be a positive. So I think it's really a question of talking to the industry, making them aware, and you have to sort of in a way convince them, but equally, not just offering a whole package. Mm -hmm. Show them what they can do, and then each person in turn, an operator, can will say, shopping. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I'm someone who has lots of interactive activities, and I find out, I heard about this, that uh, off the Danube it's possible now to go and attend a wedding in a village, mm -hmm. and the people who go to the wedding help fund the wedding, so everybody's a winner. I mean, this is the sort of thing that really gets people interested. And if that fits in with their product, then fantastic. Mm. So, uh, so, so you just need that little spark, and then they'll, then, then they'll, they'll be interested. I, I, I do agree as well that, that the Danube is on people's radar. I think some people are probably put off by the infrastructure aside from the river. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, 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 the railways don't really exist so much in parts of the Balkans. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that the, maybe the road systems aren't so good, but that makes the river all the more important. It is the main mode of transport down through southeastern Europe for tourism. We need the Orient Express. You know, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you definitely need it. Maybe on yes, water, who yes, knows? Yeah, on water, why not? This is a good a idea. A steamboat. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Daniela, 
Would you join Nick's uh, opinion or there is some more ideas that could be thrown uh, at the table so that we just uh, bear them in mind and, um, and um, uh, work on them? I would absolutely agree with what Nick says, but I would add that remember that um, education is everything, education and training, because uh, you know, we are very, we are many of us on this panel and in this room are Europeans, so we are fairly familiar with Europe, but as soon as you talk to us about very far-flung destinations, then actually our product knowledge and even our geographical mm -hmm. knowledge is very limited. And therefore, from a Pacific Asia perspective, mm -hmm. Europe is just one of the many choices mm -hmm. that clients have. Domestic and regional tourism in Asia is huge and will continue to be huge simply because it's easily accessible, it's cheap, and it's what people know about. So I would say you have a big educational exercise to do in Asia. Mm -hmm. The way you do it, I think, is join parta. Um, you know, the individual countries um, uh, within Europe are already members of parta. There are 93 country and destination organizations, definitely. Danube should join as a member of PARTA, mm. and then use that, uh, get a little bit of money off each of the countries involved, um, and, so, and then use that money as to do joint marketing activities. That's a really mm. efficient way of doing long-term training and product um, knowledge development, is by saying, you know, you're one of the questions here is, are you competing with each other or cooperating? Well, I think you just need to see what the work that you're doing mm -hmm. as one of the aspects of your marketing budget. Just mm -hmm. like you focus on a specific, you know, you mm -hmm. have a bit of marketing money which is developed to this sector of the industry or to this geographical mm -hmm. side, I think you've got the opportunity to do joint marketing activities across, um, you know, across all of the region and use the Danube mm -hmm. as the focal point and go and educate the agents and draw the clients in. Thank you very much for these valuable um, uh, recommendations. And as the, um, as the last third round, just one word of message. Raisa. Um, I, would, um, I would suggest that um, we realize that um, what, what Nick said, um, that, that we have to think what other people see in the Danube and that we have to realize that overseas markets see the destination Danube in Europe where they can discover 10 different countries in one and I think we have to look at the bigger picture and that's my wish um, that, we, that we put those uh, comp comp competition behind us and, and really look um, uh, how, how we can yeah, bring, the, bring it to the next step for, for Danube tourism in Europe. So your message is discover 10 different countries in one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nick. Phew. Sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, look, I think my message is simple. You've got an amazing product there. Uh, oh. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, the Danube, hello. The only thing is, and I totally agree with what Daniela says, is that as Europeans, it's very easy for us. We all know the Blue Danube Waltz, mm -hmm. et cetera. There are other parts of the world where they may have a vague idea. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, let's think about it. Why, why are we so fascinated by the river? Because it is a natural journey, and we're all going out there to experience a journey. There are so many things you can play with along the Danube. The product is infinite in variety, uh, from the vineyards as they change in character all the way along, through the nature that you see, the cities that you see. Uh, if you like, the Danube is sort of a story of Europe in a way. So uh -huh. a way so of selling Danube is if you really want to see Europe, Great. just do the Danube. Yeah, Start at the top, finish at the bottom, yeah. Europe. Story of Europe. And that's from someone from Britain yes. who would like you to come to London instead. So there we go. Daniela. Thank you, Nick. Story of Europe. Danube, Sweet. story of Europe. Okay. I think that's a really good strap line that you should do, um, work on, and keep building the magic. Uh -huh. that's what I keep say. building the magic. Yeah. Story of Europe. Okay, uh, Ruyana. Can you uh, maybe do the best from what you have and create a unique destination and uh, choose your partners, not your competitors. And uh, the Danube is unique and you will be enough unique to, to get your visits uh, with your uh, partners together. 
If you allow me, I would uh, extract uh, choose your partners, not mm -hmm. competitors. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is somebody writing this? Can we? Uh, I I I I'll, uh, I will try to remember to memorize all of this. Um, at this point, um, um, it's Friday, it's weekend. I'm indeed grateful for having you all here, especially the panelists. But now I would like to give the chance to the audience. Is there anybody here who would like to recommend something uh, important or to ask a question to our panelists? I don't see anything from no, this. No, there's way. a hand out of here in front. Okay. The gentleman here. The gentleman here. Row. Could you please introduce yourself? My name is uh, Wolfgang Limbert. Ah. I'm uh, working a long time for the Danube, starting with the Danube cycling track from Budapest to the Black Sea. Oh. And uh, I think, uh, first of all, what was mentioned already, nautical tourism has to be developed mm. in order to increase uh, the number of people going along the Danube because uh, a pity is that the cruising, which is uh, rather uh, very well developed <coughs> with more than 300 ships along the Danube, but 70 to 80 percent are only going to Budapest and this is the end for them, for the travelers. And uh, I think to go on to see Croatia, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, there are wonderful destinations and it gives a, a better glance what it means Danube, these t 10 countries and not only uh, the, the beginning of the Danube from uh, Passau up to Budapest. This is not enough. It must be promoted that ships, more ships are going to the Danube Delta and to see everything. Thank and you. Iron Gate. Mm -hmm. And Iron Gate as one of the most beautiful regions with National such a history, uh, Lepinski Via, for example, and other uh, Second points. Second largest wonderful. canyon in the world after mm -hmm. Colorado. Uh, is there anybody else at the moment? Because we just have one more moment. No? Uh, um, uh, thank you, Mr. Limbert. I'm indeed uh, uh, grateful, and uh, I wish you all um, a pleasant weekend and the rest of the stay in Berlin at the ITB and in Berlin itself. It's very attractive. But uh, I would like to uh, conclude with one uh, uh, slide which was recommended me by a good friend from European Commission. It is called Blue Ocean. It is not Blue Danube. It is the cover page of this book which uh, uh, deals exactly with the same topic. Uh, two faces of the Blue Ocean. One is with sharks, blood, fight, and so on. And the other one is very peaceful, calm, and in harmony. So let's, as Ruyana said, let's choose our partners, not competitors. Uh, I don't, unfortunately, have the book to hand over today, but I recommend to get it. Instead, I strongly recommend to get the latest brochure of the Danube Competency Center on the way out. Uh, a day on the Danube, which could be very interesting uh, for potential trips. Uh, thank you once again very much, and uh, see you on the Danube. Hmm. Thank you.